Let's roll it. So we'd like to uh, welcome uh, James Cochran today from uh, the University of Buffalo's Office of uh, Health Promotion. Um, Janice is a um, highly trained nutritionist, and she's going to talk to us today about aspects of, of, of eating, but also as they involve uh, sustainability. So uh, Janice, with, with no further ado, um, welcome, and we're very happy to have you here and, and look forward to hear, hearing what you have to say. Great. Thanks, Don. So again, my name is Janice Cochran. I'm with the Office of Health Promotion, which is part of student wellness in student life. Um, I'm a registered dietitian. Um, not every nutritionist is a registered dietitian. Um, it's a national credential. Um, so just in terms of that difference, but we do use the term RDN for registered dietitian nutritionist because nutritionist seems to be the common um, term used. So I am a registered dietitian. Um, the, what we're going to cover today is on preventing food waste and um, with a little bit, definitely a little bit of a focus on saving money, but I also want to include all the other benefits. Um, of how preventing food waste benefits uh, earth and resources, et cetera, as well. But definitely um, our pockets are in there. So I want to do, um, I want to define food loss as distinct from food waste. These terms have finally um, developed some more standardized definitions. Um, look a little bit at how much we're wasting and where it's happening. Um, touch on the impact of food waste. Look at what some other entities are doing to address food waste. So I look, I want to go big, look at the world, then the UK, because uh, they've made uh, significant strides. Look at the US, UB, and then you and me. So actions we can take in our own lives. And my hope is that in learning about food waste, we can get inspired to uh, assess our own uh, habits and try to prevent waste, food waste in our own lives. So food loss uh, pretty much refers to inefficiencies in the food chain between harvest, but pre-retail. So maybe uh, transport from field to a processor or packager and so on. Um, food waste more refers to uh, retail, restaurant, food service, and consumer level waste. Um, and it's often more due to neglect or um, mismanagement. And any thoughts on how much food waste there is in the US either by billions of pounds or percent or anything else. And these figures, there are definitely ranges, but any guesses? Percent wasted food. Yeah, how, how much percent would you estimate is wasted? 60%. Of the food that is produced? Yes. Any others? You, Jeremy, say 25%. Okay, so, and it's hard to determine these numbers. And of course there's different methodologies. Um, ballpark estimates are 30 to 40, although the latest study by the UN that just came out in March of this year, definitely uh, views these estimates as underestimates. Um, so a lot, a lot of the issue is how do we track and assess these numbers of how much is being lost. But um, this is enormous, enormous. Some people equate it to going to the store and just dropping a bag uh, on the way <laughs> as you're leaving. Um, billions of pounds, a lot of money. And this visual um, represents just for greenhouse gas emissions, if we're looking at the impact of food waste, food waste, greenhouse gas, the, what is produced because of food waste 
is considered the third largest producer of greenhouse gas emissions. Um, so that's just one aspect of environmental impact, but it's definitely significant. Where does it happen the most? Um, this is, uh, the, the new data is changing somewhat, but it's felt that developing countries uh, had higher levels of food loss, um, lack of infrastructure or transportation from harvest to market. Um, whereas developed nations, it's more that food loss sector, um, food service to household. And of these different sectors, which do you think wastes the most food? Wholesale, food wholesalers, supermarkets, restaurants, residences, K through 12 schools or office buildings? Oh, definitely residences. Definitely residences and I pound that in. Um, and, and the reason why it's, um, just to emphasize it, is that we have the power uh, to make a difference, not only in saving money, but also in uh, helping the planet. So I'm going to play this little video um, hopefully I'm going to stop this and bring up the video. Okay. Oh, it keeps showing my original um, screen. I'm not sure why. Stop share. Yeah, I did that. And then I, okay. I think it's the screen I clicked. Um, here it is. Okay. You see this? Yes. Let me make, let me make sure the, um, the videos or the, um, sound is on. Hang on. Okay, it is. I'm not, I'm sorry, I had it up and now it's not coming up. Just a second. Let me. I don't know if I have a couple shares up here when I select the screen. I think it's, it's, a, it's a Zoom issue. I was having the same issue yesterday. Yeah, it just keeps going back. I'm sorry. Um, maybe I, um, you had it for a minute. Yeah, I had it for a minute and I'm not sure why. Let me re reconnect these buttons. I'm not, I'm not sure why it's not showing. Okay, so we'll skip that video. It was a very cute video. <laughs> okay, basically when we cook, it's, uh, it's, we're losing at least a fourth of the food that we buy that we bring home. So again, these estimates are low, but it shows someone making a stir fry and taking a fourth of the food they're prepping and just dropping it into the garbage. Yeah. So, so um, yes, residential is the answer. And these estimates vary. This is 40%. Again, the new study from uh, UNEP is showing 60 one percent is in the is in the consumer at the consumer level, um, but it's significant. Also, in terms of North America, the United States is lopsided in terms of 
uh, the amount of uh, food waste. And what's also important is understanding that as the food goes along the supply chain from the field to processing to consuming um, relative to the stage in the supply chain, greenhouse gas emissions increase towards that level of food waste. So if it's getting all the way to us on our plate and we throw it out, everything embedded in that food, it's going to have the highest accumulation of greenhouse gas emissions that we're literally wasting that have been spent to produce that food. And then we're just tossing it and actually producing more greenhouse gas when it goes into landfill, when it goes into garbage. So um, definitely as it goes along the stage of food production, um, greenhouse gases go up. So a lot of benefits if we do reduce food waste, it can improve food security. You know, this is a, a, a amazing issue about hunger increasing and yet we're wasting all this food that has been produced. Um, the impact on climate change and not just greenhouse gas emissions, but also land, biodiversity, um, and water use. And then, yes, yeah, saving money, not only for the country, but for our own wallets. So there's tremendous benefits. Um, and for industry and um, companies to waste management costs. So this is just another visual trying to capture all of those aspects uh, that are affected and that we lose with, with food waste. This National Resource Defense Council, it's fascinating. A lot of these environmental organizations are studying um, food waste. It's not just like food organizations because, because it's such an impact on the environment. Uh, they came out with an amazing report in 2012 called Wasted, which came up with that first 40% food waste figure. Um, Refed is an organization um, in the US that does a lot of analysis. They have tremendous tools to help industry, um, governments, industry, and consumers re uh, waste less food. The top solutions that they came up with um, in terms of effectiveness is improving date, food date labels, um, consumer education, because most of the food waste is in the home, and then also adjusting packages. But if you look at money, they're saying six billion of this overall savings um, can be right in consumers' pockets. This was done by the USDA in terms of by type of food. You can also analyze food waste by weight. Um, but in terms of dollars, typically, if uh, protein foods or meat is lost, that may be a little more expensive, although by volume, we may be losing a little more uh, fruits and vegetables, typically if they're bought fresh. And grains also can be a factor. Where is it going when we lose it? So again, uh, res you know, residences are the majority of loss. A lot of it is simply going to landfill which is um, producing more greenhouse gas. So it's really of benefit if we can, at least if it's not being eaten, um, get it elsewhere. Um, a little bit goes down the drain. Some municipalities go to combustion, some a little bit goes to um, compost. Um, the EPA, uh, in terms of the US government efforts, uh, has this food recovery hierarchy, definitely at the top is most efficient use of food, which is to not overproduce, not overserve, not overbuy. So if we can reduce food excess at the top, that's most efficient, then get it to people into human mouths, which is next most efficient, if not humans, then animals. Uh, if neither of those then uh, produce energy or other uses with food scrap. Composting is that net just above throwing in the garbage. 
it's good and useful, um, uh, but it's definitely more efficient to, to do things at the higher end of the hierarchy. And then last is landfill, and that's where there's actually a negative impact. So again, just taking greenhouse gas impact, much more impactful to prevent um, excess production and give to humans. So food donation, um, composting helps a little, definitely keep it out of landfill because that actually adds to greenhouse gas production. So worldwide, what's being done? Um, so in 2011, the Food and Agricultural Organization came up with that initial figure, which we know is an underestimate, but that a third of, of food produced globally is lost um, or wasted. So um, really brought to our attention, even though it was not mentioned in the Paris Climate Agreement, this incredibly impactful aspect um, on uh, in environmental sustainability, it was just not, not really captured yet. Um, the sustainable development goals, uh, this is, you know, the obvious one, but it's many. I mean, it, it must affect at least 10 of these targets overall, but uh, the goal globally is to have food waste by 2030. So it's an ambitious goal, but again, it's something that we all can do. We have, you know, we have some power. If climate change isn't completely this existential thing. Um, what we do every day does matter. So, um, you know what else though, Janice, is when you're yeah. at the grocery store, um, often um, when you're trying to buy, like, a, let's say, like asparagus. Okay, so uh -huh. you can't buy like, you know, the portion that you need for your meal. You got to buy a big honking. Uh, like three meals worth of asparagus, which, which if they if you are allowed to pick what you need as opposed to what they want to give you, um, yes, would help to drive some of the over, um, over uh, unfortunately wasting down. Absolutely. So there are a lot of things that supermarkets can do. Um, I mean, in terms of the consumer end, if if we can buy directly from the grower or farmers markets, maybe or bulk bins, even for produce, and just pick what's needed. Um, but absolutely, th those sorts of um, habits, like having larger bunches, having the bins jammed full to sort of make it look like a beautiful display, and then some of them go bad, or people don't want to take the last five, um, the, the aesthetic demands of a supermarket and how we buy with our eyes, and uh, just fascinating issues with um, how so much food is wasted because it doesn't match the supermarket's aesthetic requirements. So you're right, a lot of things there can change. Um, it does put more burden on a consumer. Well, where can I buy it uh, piece by piece? Um, some places uh, offer it you know, maybe a co-op versus a supermarket or um, or maybe a farmer's market, they, they might be more willing to, to sell a smaller bunch or, or break it up by piece. Um, but absolutely, actions to prevent food waste. This is from the UK. So the UK uh, bit off um, this goal to, to bring down uh, food waste. They realized what it was costing them and they really used the saving money piece in their visuals with consumers. So they talked about how much money they threw away every month. Um, and their three uh, tips, one of them was supermarket related. Uh, they printed tips on the bags for better food storage to keep, you know, preserve food better. Although now we're getting into issues of getting rid of bags, so maybe we can pin them, print them on the totes, why not? Um, shifting away from buy one, get one free, especially with produce or other perishables. Um, it really sort of encourages overbuying and then waste. Um, this love food, hate waste campaign 
very fun, you know, put together by a slick ad agency. So put it in consumer terms, um, had little slogans like make toast, not waste. So especially, for example, in hot weather, if bread is going bad, you know, keep it in the freezer. It tends to go stale in the refrigerator, but we can keep it in the freezer and then take it out as we use it um, and thaw it or uh, toast it, whatever. Uh, they definitely attacked the food date label issue and um, that was impactful. And then they also increased organics collection. And that factor, um, we'll get into that a little bit later too. Um, so what has the US done in 2015? US set this goal, reduce food waste 50% by 2030. Um, and then in 2018, the FDA joined, uh, the, you know, so it's a, these three agencies and they have a campaign winning to reduce food waste. I don't know if anyone's heard of it or has seen any messages from these campaigns. Um, but there is legislation, it hasn't moved, but uh, started in 2016, reintroduced 2019 to try to standardize the food date labels so that they go, uh, they are, there are just two instead of a lot of different wording, maybe confusing, getting rid of the sell by, which is for geared to the targeted to the store, not the consumer, and simply have two dates. The best if used by, which indicate, indicates quality, the food may, may still be safe and very edible after that time, but it just indicates best quality date. And then a use by date, which refers to safety. And after that date, you would wanna discard the food. So boiling it down to those two ideally would be less confusing for consumers. Um, going a little closer into the states, I uh, just found out Vermont just passed a, uh, a food, waste, food waste legislation um, that you can't put food into the garbage. Um, New York State, has the food scrap and recycling law that will go into effect next January. Um, UB qualifies, it's any institution, any, any entity that produces two tons or more of food waste a week has to comply with this law, which promotes food donation whenever possible of edible food and then uh, recycling food scraps with a local, uh, food recycler or composter or bio uh, energy producer. So that's in the works um, when that goes into effect. Refed is similar to RAP. It's this um, amazing uh, analytical um, organization that studies efficiency of solutions to prevent food waste. And the seven key focuses that they, they have determined um, range the whole supply chain, but definitely reshaping consumer environments is a big, um, big issue. So to get back to the states, uh, I'm sorry, this jumped around a little bit, but there are um, six states that have passed legislation requiring people, you know, some, some aspect of preventing food waste. Um, the Harvard Food Law and Policy Clinic focuses specifically on this issue so they can help enable legislation that can nudge this um, sort of like help strong arm our habits to uh, reduce the amount of food going into the garbage and producing more greenhouse gases among all the other losses that that entails. So UB, and I don't do this justice because UD, UB has done a lot of other things as well, but going trayless encourages people not piling their trays, which wastes a lot of food. Um, they bought a couple uh, food dehydrators um, for which produced a soil amendment and they gave the soil amendment to anyone in the community, um, as well as using natural upcycle cycle. Um, and also a student group in November um, 
Food Recovery Network is a national student organization focused on food donation and food recovery. So at UB, the student chapter, they managed, they worked with CDS, campus dining and shops, and they did seven recoveries and recovered 321 pounds of food. So that's again, the top of the EPA hierarchy that is the most efficient way um, to, to prevent the Im impact of food waste. And there are protections. A lot of times entities don't donate because they're scared of liability issues, but there are laws on the books to prevent the, um, to protect the donor and um, help make this happen. Yeah, the students found out about that from a visit to RIT and, and said, why aren't we doing that? And they came back with it and they ran it up the flagpole and um, with the, those yeah. who make the decision said, absolutely, let's do it. Yeah. Yes, again, there are some, there's some hesitation or fear or it's more work, et cetera. That gets into sort of at the attitude issue, but it's definitely doable. And I think over time, especially with the pandemic, there will be more tapping into these networks of food recovery. Um, so attitudes, you know, disposing is cheaper than reusing or donating, et cetera. Um, the quality standards from supermarkets, or just the fact that we have so much. Um, I'm amazed, you know, when we go to a restaurant and people are done, they're full, I understand not eating past fullness. We leave it on our plates and then everything that went into that food is wasted. It's, this is an ex somehow an acceptable loss. Like if we went to a store and bought four shirts, we're not gonna throw one out. But yet with food, somehow it's okay. It's very common. So I think we can be a lot more aggressive um, with doing things to make it less acceptable to waste food. Um, so actions we can take, we can tell our representatives, please pass this Food Date Label Act, um, starting with ourselves, target, assess where we might waste food, um, and then try to do something about it. Uh, these are common strategies. So before shopping, there are things we can do during cooking, storing, and eating. And we want to potentially tap whichever thing, you know, whichever uh, stage may be our Achilles heel and see what we can do um, ultimately to, to create a culture of waste avoidance. So these are from uh, the Colorado um, University. It was uh, uh, the video on um, preventing food waste. And these are some tips they have. Uh, so specifying quantities. Um, I think this should go first, this shop your, shop your fridge and cupboards first before you make your shopping list. Um, and Don, what you mentioned, like, can we buy things in smaller amounts? Um, sticking to your list, choosing loose over prepackaged and choosing the bulk section. Anyone else have some things that they suggest for uh, a tip to help prevent overbuying when we, when we buy food? Uh, yes. Okay, so um, one of the things is, and so my mother and father raised me to be a very good uh, leftover eater, but a lot, of people, uh -huh. a lot of people don't like leftovers. However, if when you make a meal that you have a, a, another meal to come from some of the ingredients um, thought about in advance, you could use, for instance, if you made a turkey, okay? And you know, once you eat your turkey dinner or your chicken dinner, then you could make chicken salad or you could make, um, turkey soup or chicken soup. So if you, if you are, you know, basically reusing it for an, another purpose, an additional purpose, that could prevent you from, from throwing it away. Absolutely. That it's great to, to pre-think if I make this and it's more than one meal, how might I use it? How might I jazz it up to make it a little different next time and use it up? Um, there's so many things regarding that, you know, so when we save the food, can we put it in clear containers? Can we date it? 
can we put it in a spot in our refrigerator? I'll get into this a little bit that reminds us and nudges us to use it up within three to five days max. Um, so that we're, we're, it's sort of in our visual, you know, sight. Um, one of the biggest ones that I think in terms of before we shop, I don't know if anyone's ever shopped hungry, <laughs> but what I do, I come home with twice as much as, as intended. So to me, one of the best, most, uh, you know, I, I just, I see it in my wallet. I save money if I make sure I eat a really decent meal before I even step into that store. And I tend to stick to my list. I tend to not be, you know, buying things that I wouldn't normally get, et cetera. So definitely don't shop hungry is a big one I would add. This can vary depending on the um, source. This is percent wasted. You can also track it by food or by dollar. Um, again, everyone might have a different food that is, is their concern. Um, in terms of habits at home, the having a, a designated space or little bucket in, in the refrigerator where you put that cut onion that you know you want to use before uh, it starts to go. So organizing the space in the refrigerator can, again, help help push us to what we want to do. This is from the EPA. The EPA has a lot of um, work, you know, worksheets and great tips for uh, things that consumers can do to save, save money on food. The other thing I would say as a dietitian, a lot of times people are like, oh, well, I don't buy canned or frozen because it's not good or it doesn't have nutrients. Not at all. If you're finding that you buy fresh whatever and it is always going bad, consider getting frozen or canned. These are not valueless foods. Yes, they may be a little different nutritionally or texture, et cetera, but a lot of times some canned foods can really fill the need if, if your fresh is going bad all the time. So in terms of fruits and vegetables, all forms are really useful. Have some fresh, some frozen, some canned, some dried, and it can all, um, all help. This is showing a family of four. This, these figures are much more than that $370 uh, a year. So again, everyone, every family might vary, but um, yeah, know that canned and frozen can help. Planning ahead, eat before shopping, freezing and storing well. I have a lot of resources at the end. Um, I don't know if you, if you want to give the entire PowerPoint or just the links at the end. Um, but there are so many tips uh, that can be used to store food longer um, and make sure that we use it up. One of the, you know, we, we do a lot of freezing, right? And one of the things yeah. we changed a long time ago was when we freeze, even though you have a clear, like a clear container, sometimes after it's been frozen, you really can't quite tell whether it's if, if it's a container of, uh, you know, zucchini or whether it's a container of sauce or whatever. So we have a mat, uh, roll of masking tape nearby and the masking tape goes on the lid and then we mark on the lid um, what it is. So you eat it. Yeah. Labeling is really smart. I, 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 I'm still learning myself. I took something out yesterday from my freezer. Didn't, I had not labeled it. And I didn't know what it was. <laughs> and so unfortunately, um, it is going in the compost just because I'm, I, I think it's grapes, but I don't, I, I, I just could not believe I did not, I was not sure what it was. It had, um, it was, I'm very disappointed in myself, but the clear container, the labeling with what it is and the date is very helpful. And there's a lot of resources at the end. Again, freezer, six months is ideal if we use it up within six months. Um, you know, if it's, a, if it's a canned item, it's typically two years, unless it's acidic, you might wanna use it within one year, like tomato, canned tomatoes. Um, but having the date helps. And then also um, we'll, we'll get into some other aspects of making sure we use everything we bought. 
this leaf to root. I know um, some people are really amazing with this more so than I am. It's similar to the nose to tail use of using every aspect of an animal if that's being used for food. So uh, using the leafy uh, green, you know, beet greens, they're, they're incredibly delicious. Like instead of just chopping them off, let's cook them up. Um, and then uh, see if we can use the entire food. These tips are from Lean Path, which is uh, an amazing company that works with industry to help reduce food waste. But these are their tips for food waste at home. So again, they talk about planning ahead. Um, Don, what you said, just buying what you, what you need. Keeping some foods in water. My mom always kept cut carrots in a glass of water and it just kept them fresher for longer. And um, then as a kid, I know, you would drink some, drink the water at the end. It had a little flavor to it. But um, uh, organizing your fridge, fridge using the the dates. Um, regarding using leftovers, handpick.com. There are some other sites um, that also are good at like you put, you type in what you have, and then it'll come up with a recipe for that food. Using the clear containers, dating, um, and labeling. Making stock, some people, even like the peels, um, et cetera, they'll just throw it in a bowl. They'll make like a scrappy bowl and then they'll make stock from it. Keep it in the freezer. Um, and then definitely some tips for storing the right way. But I think this number 10 should be number one. Like let's track, if we can, sort of determine where our weak spots are and see what we can do. Um, uh, this is sort of repeating, definitely first in, first out. I know my brother uh, told me a story yesterday that he was digging in the fridge and found a, some meat they had bought and he pulled it out and he's like, oh no, it's past, you know, it's it was starting to go bad. So if we can, again, organize our fridge so that what needs to be used up first is mo is front and center when we open, open that door. Um, with, within reason, obviously you can still keep certain things in uh, the, the crisper drawers if you want, but I like to put things in my line of eyesight. Um, and again, compost, there are I have tips at the end if you are interested in starting your own and you, you're not already, it's a doable thing um, just to prevent the waste from going to landfill. Um, Reviving greens. So lettuce or greens are another food um, that can commonly go bad. I will say some people like to keep them loosely packed with a paper towel so that they don't get soggy because that water can cause rot. Um, and then maybe as the paper towel gets damper, replace it with another dry one. Um, but you can, if the greens are starting to wilt, you can put them in a bowl of ice water and by osmosis, it will refill those cells and sort of perk up those, uh, the lettuce to use right then and there. It's not gonna hold it for long, but um, you can eat it right then. Planning to use, uh, some people say, okay, on Fridays, I'm gonna check what I have left in the fridge and just cook it up. Uh, so sort of planning to use up what's in the fridge. Storing foods properly. There's a great resource at the end from um, fruits and veggies, more uh, fruits and veggies, food storage 101 from Produce for Better Health on making sure we store our food so that it doesn't over ripen too quickly. Um, we can place a lot in the fridge or the freezer, like keeping flour in the freezer or bread in the freezer. Um, oils you can keep in the fridge um, if it's like a olive oil or canola, it might, you know, uh, solidify a little bit, but a few minutes at room temp, it'll, it'll liquefy again. Um, using your eyes and nose. So if you do pull a food out and let's say it's close to um, the best buy date, I, again, not to pick up my brother, and <laughs> but my sister-in-law, if a food, if milk is even approaching the sell by date or any other date on there, if it's even approaching it, she tosses it. 
She just doesn't want it to get near where it might go bad. Um, it's not a hundred percent guarantee. I mean, there, there can even be foods that are within the date that have gone bad because during transport temperature wasn't held. So you can use your, get used to using our eyes and our nose regularly um, with food. Definitely if it's slimy needs to go. Um, mold, I would say definitely bread. You can't see the mold. So um, if you see any mold at all, you, you really have to lose a lot of it. There, there's no like cutting around it because the mold isn't visible, um, except with hard cheese. You can cut, uh, if you see some mold, you can cut around it and use the rest of the cheese. But if the texture's off or you're smelling it, that's bacteria, um, it's starting to decompose. So if you can compost it uh, versus throwing it out. So assessing food waste, um, Consider when you eat out, some people bring their own container or share it or ask to have, could I have half of it served, half of it packed to go, whatever, Where, wherever our, our areas are um, and understand why, why it's happening, um, using those food date labels properly and maybe pick one area um, to try. And this is from um, the UN Environment Program. If we shop carefully, cook creatively, make food waste socially unacceptable uh, while we strive to provide healthy, sustainable diets to all. So we can play a role. And then I have a ton of uh, resources that I, I could send you, um, I, I could say this as a PDF and, and send uh, but there are apps for storing food safe, safely. These are actually more quality based, like how long can I keep, uh, you know, cooked corn or whatever. Uh, so the food, the um, food keeper app is from the FDA and USDA. Stilltasty.com is another good app that's um, helpful. There's tips on testing if eggs are still fresh. Um, yeah, Janice, if you send those to us, we'll get yeah. them on the website for people. Sure. To okay. And um, yeah, these are, these are some other great websites that have just enormous, enormous resources and ideas for saving, um, you know, preserving food longer, preventing food waste. Um, and then last resort, you know, if we can't pre prevent it from the top or give it to human or an animal or on down the line, then we can compost and at least keep it out of landfill. These are some local resources. Um, Cornell University has excellent compost resources. Um, City of Buffalo has started a community composting program. Uh, so you can take your food scraps and waste there. Um, you can also do uh, work with farmer pirates where they give you a bucket and they pick it up every two weeks and then give you a fresh empty bucket. And um, so that supports local growers and gets the food waste out of the landfill. Um, these are, uh, this was a neat workshop that I saw amazing things that these chefs are doing to reduce food waste. And this particular tip sheet from Syracuse University has excellent tips as well. So that's like a link that has more links. Um, so a lot of uh, resources and um, I will put those in PDF and uh, send to you. So I wanted to just open it up for questions, comments and your ideas for preventing food waste. Cause I'm sure I'm going to learn from others as well. Yeah, I, we're a small group. So if you want to just unmute and ask, but um, he put in the chat that they you, he and his wife use the key ring app that uh, stores all their bonus cards and grocery lists. So they can coordinate over the air. Um, what was that app? Key ring? Key ring. Key ring. Okay. So that's a new one to me. 
this is kind of a silly question and there's probably not a correct answer, but if we, living in Buffalo, Western New York, we love to go to the farmer's market all summer or get our CSA share. And then as soon as winter hits, we go back to Wegmans or Tops. Um, are Wegmans and Tops buying the same amount of produce all year or are they, are they advanced enough that they're reducing what they buy from the manufacturers during the summer months, knowing that we're using less? I can't say with absolute knowledge, but supermarkets are very aggressive at, at trying to prevent waste. They try to forecast extensively. So they look at sales data year round. I, 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 there's a lot of calculating and doing, um, you know, if they find after a month that they wasted 10 more pounds of something, I'm sure they're doing everything they can to try to narrow that down. It, but again, it's sort of hard within the context of showing abundance too. You know, so we have those, those um, sort of common expectations as consumers, but I would think that they do take that into account definitely. And, um, but that would be a better question for them. <laughs> you know, the, the uh, produce manager at those stores. Um, I find, uh, so I use the CSA, Community Supported Agriculture. I get a share also. For me, it's been a challenge, even, a, even half of a share. Um, so I found that the sooner I cook it, the more likely I will eat it all. Because if I, if I would just leave it raw and then the week goes on and I have too many things going on or something came up and then I didn't cook that day, uh, I'm left at the end of the week. I have a new one coming that Saturday, a new share coming, and I have all this leftover. So I find that the sooner I cook it up, I'm more likely to eat pre-cooked food than I am to say, oh, that needs to be eaten. I've got to get some pots and pans and cook it up. It's sort of my laziness kicks in. So if I try to attack it, as soon as I get it, either cook it, store it, or give it away, then I tend to waste less. Um, that's a separate topic, but uh, yeah. Any other thoughts or comments, questions? I have one other thing. Um, uh, in the last two years, I've joined a Facebook buy nothing group. Um, they're micro groups and produce hasn't been a big thing, but I'd like to see it become a thing, you know, because a lot of things I pick up or give away are from two, three blocks away. So um, you know, it's easy to search on Facebook for your, just search by nothing and then your group or your area Yeah. and see if you have a group. Um, I'm currently in North Buffalo and it's a huge group. Uh, I mean, I think we're like 1500 or 2000 members strong. And I mean, people have eggs that are going bad next week and someone comes and picks them up and it's just, and it's Craigslist you know, they could be in Warsaw and there's no way you're driving to Warsaw for eggs, but you'll drive yeah. to the box, you know, so just something to look up. I think that's excellent. And it's thrilling to hear that food is making it to that list too. I, I get so upset when I see durable goods, like a, a child's picnic table, someone just puts to the curb, like, don't put that in landfill, someone else could use that. Yeah. So I feel like if we could by policy, like have our municipal waste, you know, the government sort of push this. I mean, they can't legislate people use these, these groups, but at least encourage them. Um, but that's fantastic, Todd, that it's, that it's hitting into food as well. I know I, I sort of like will run around to my neighbors if I have like too many watermelons and, you know, just see if someone can use it, but posting it on um, a source like that is great. And that, that's where the electronic uh, aspect, you know, the technology of sharing is really a plus. That's great. Any other comments or suggestions? 
Janice, can you, this is a little offbeat, but can you talk a little bit about what's going on in town and which organizations are trying to get food that I guess grocery stores and farmers aren't using to like the city mission and the food pantry and that kind of thing. I don't know how involved you are in that area. Yeah, so I'm I'm not directly involved. Um, I know there are several organizations okay. um, depending on if it's like ready to eat food versus just non-perishable food. Um, so the, um, is it St. Gregory's? They have a pretty long-standing food, uh, food donation program. Um, I, can, I can put a few down and send also with the other links as well. Okay, that would be um, great. Yeah, and, and it's an area that I think is, is going to grow. Uh, we know statewide it's, it's happened out of necessity because of the pandemic. You know, it was right. just tragic to watch dairy farmers toss milk right. until we got Nourish New York to capture and help uh, industry pivot to make individually packaged right. items and save that food. So on a statewide level, there's a lot of support. Um, and in terms of the individual groups locally, I could, you know, look that up. Definitely in terms of protection, if you're talking about edible food or prepared food, it has to go to a nonprofit. So I can't just like give it to, a, if I've made three trays of lasagna or something, mm -hmm. I'm technically not protected if I just give it to anyone. Right. So if it's a nonprofit that's built to handle that and give it to people in the community, um, then that fits the, the model. Great, thank you. I have an interest in that area. So I'm excellent. I'm, lo I'm looking for who's doing it locally and you know who might have a spot open on their board and looking for volunteers yes. kind of thing. Yeah. I'm, I'm just, I'm sorry. I'm just blanking on the No, that's okay. And, and I didn't mean to put you on the spot. Yeah, no, no, definitely. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll pull together um, the ones that I'm aware of and, uh, and then I, that would, I should have done that before. So thank no, you. That's okay. And even just the nurse New York was, was a good lead. So I'll follow up on that too. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and again, that's the uh, the capturing food and giving it to people. It's it's the most effective thing we can do, it, uh, other than the reducing uh, excess production and buying. Um, thank you so much for inviting me. <laughs> this is a pet topic of mine, and I I hope to you know uh, you know bring bring it to students as well because. I think when they, and a lot of them are very savvy, a lot of them are very interested in sustainability. So if we can share it uh, with them and let them know how, how useful it is, um, uh, I, think, I think there's a lot we can do. Thank you so much on behalf of the PSS Sustainable Living Committee. We really appreciate you taking the time to share with us and um, we will post this on our site along with any links uh, you share with us. Uh, maybe we'll just post the um, PowerPoint if that's okay and uh, make it available for anyone. Okay. All right. Everybody Thanks enjoy so your much. weekend. Thank you so much. Yes, you all too. Thank you. Bye. Bye. So Todd, thank you. <laughs> yes, thank you. And um, yeah, I'll I'll put the uh, I'll put to, together some donation items. Do you want me to just add them to the PowerPoint? Yeah, that'd be great. Put it and all. Then, yeah, and then I could send you a new copy.